Hi, I'm Michael, and this is Maker's Workshop. My sister's expecting a baby, and I've been wanting to make a dresser for a while, so I thought that this would be a good opportunity to make one for the nursery. Let's get started. After sketching out dimensions, I picked out a slab of walnut that would work well for the top of the dresser and started pulling off the bark. Then I sanded the live edge up to a 220 grit. At this point we have the edges of the slab prepared so I'm going to cut it down to length and then we're going to run it through the planer and get it ready for our resin pour. I drum sanded my cut slab until I had it completely flat on both sides. And then decided where I wanted to cut it lengthwise to split it and create the shape of my river. the dimensions of my mold were coincidentally almost identical to the dimensions of our tabletops. So I decided to just turn the tabletop itself into the base of the mold. Seemed like the easiest option. So with some helping hands, I coated a bunch of chipboard with Tyvek tape and then pieced those together and thoroughly taped it down to completely cover and protect the tabletop. Once I felt confident I had everything covered, Brooke helped me position the walnut. I just used some painter's tape on each end to anchor the slabs and keep them from eventually floating in the resin. Last thing to do was dam up the edges of the river and seal everything off with hot glue. And then it was time to mix up some resin. Well, I'm just trying to... I'm just nervous it's going to spill. Alright. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm using Total Boat Thick Set for this resin pour because it can be poured up to 2 inches thick without an issue. To color this, Brooke used mostly a dark grey mica with a bit of charcoal powder. And then it was time to pour. With this initial pour, I pulled the resin up on the sides of the live edge. This will seal the edge and eliminate any risk of bubbles forming with the bigger pour happening the next day. An initial thin pour of resin is kind of like the very last step in making a leak-proof mold. It fills in any cracks or gaps and then solidifies. Looking good. Yep, so when we come back, we will just pour right on top of that. Brooke sanded down the hardened resin and then wiped it thoroughly with rubbing alcohol. This is a really important step to get the second resin pour to nicely lay on top of that first layer. And then it was time for the largest of the resin pours. Let's make some resin. Setting up my stuff, you know what I'm saying? Three to one, three to one. I mixed up the resin and Brooke handled adding the pigments to it before pouring it in.
This took a few bucketfuls to completely fill the void in my walnut slab. And remember, I'm using thick set, which I know can handle up to a 2 inch pour. For a big epoxy pour like this, you want to choose what kind you use carefully. And then I swirled it, mainly just for fun. This epoxy sets up really slow and ultimately is going to do whatever the heck it wants. I hit the surface with a torch and then let it sit for 24 hours and popped it off the table. Weirdly enough, this ridiculous mold far outperformed our last normal resin mold. See that nightstand video if you're curious. For the sides of the dresser, I went with walnut plywood. I cut a few sheets down to size for all four sides. All right, so this is the face of the dresser, and all we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna sketch out where I want the drawers to go, and then I'm gonna remove the negative spaces. I sketched out where my drawers were going in pencil, and then drilled into the first drawer section using a power drill. This made it easy to slip my jigsaw into place and start cutting out each hole. To get a nice and square rectangle, I start with a rounded shape and then go back to two shorter strokes to make a sharp corner. And then slowly but surely, I work my way through all four drawer slots. So at this point we have all of our pieces cut and I'm just going to take it over to the router table and route a channel on the sides uh, for the front and the back panel to slide in so that it's properly spaced and it'll give a little bit of added strength for the glue up. I routed out two channels on either side of my side pieces. and then dry fit the dresser together to be sure it all went according to plan before gluing into place with wood glue. The hardest part about this glue up was needing to move quickly with such a sizable piece. Brooke gave me a hand to double my speed and then we added band clamps. An important note here is that I positioned them where the cross supports between the drawers are so that it had rigidity once we applied pressure. If I positioned these adjacent to one of the large holes I just cut, it probably wouldn't take the heavy pressure well and could even break. After double checking it square, I left it overnight. In the meantime, I revisited the tabletop. I trimmed down the sides a bit on a table saw and then drum sanded both sides until it was flat, keeping as much thickness as possible. From there, the top could be sanded up to a 220 grit with a random orbital sander. After that, I went back and removed the clamps from the dresser base. I gave the edges of plywood a quick sand. Using strips of plywood cut to fit, I built up a support on the edges of the dresser where the drawer slides will need to attach. I used layers of quarter inch plywood using the classic wood glue and CA glue trick to get a strong bond. This gave me a lot of control of the exact thickness I wanted for each support. I also needed to add a brace going across the middle of the dresser between the two small drawers at the top. To do this, I created a ledge with smaller pieces of plywood on the front and back so I could easily rest a chunk of the plywood strips on top. I could then secure it and add strength with metal brackets.
Brooke handled adding walnut edge banding to all the exposed edges by trimming it to size and applying heat and pressure with an iron. Once it fully set, we used an edge banding trimming tool to trim off the overhang, and then I went in with a utility knife to get into the tighter corners. To prep this for finish, we wiped it down with rubbing alcohol to pull off any dirt and dust. We're using Osmo to finish this for a soft, natural finish. We fully coated the interior and exterior of the dresser base. Then it was time to pick out some wood for the drawer faces. Last summer we milled up a bunch of local lumber and set up our own wood drying kilns. And I knew I had some visually beautiful maple that was also from a large old tree in the town the baby will be brought home to. Using a few passes on a table saw, I created a stable and flat edge on each slab. and then plane them down completely on both sides. Using the square edge as a stable base, I resawed each slab on my bandsaw. We have done the rough milling at this point. I'm just going to pick out any bits of sawdust that are stuck in the cracks and then fill it with resin before bringing over the drum sander and bringing it down to its final dimensions. I find that total book 2 to 1 epoxy is best for filling voids like this and you also want to do it in multiple pours. As the epoxy sits it can seep into the wood and require more on top to fill it. Once that epoxy cured overnight I could start bringing these sections a bit closer to their final dimensions. The closer you can get a piece to its final size before drum sanding, the better. Brooke is scribbling on all sides of each piece of maple to create an easy visual guide to know when each piece is completely flat. Additionally, these are done in an assembly line to make sure each slab ends up to be the exact same thickness. I use the same scribe method to get nice square edges on the joiner as well. This preps the pieces to be cut to their final dimensions on the table saw back at the shop. I am adding a bevel with my router table to the edges of the drawers for a sleek, subtly masculine look. At this point, I revisited the sanded tabletop. I cut it down to its final dimensions and added that same bevel to the top edge for visual continuity. This got one last sand to buff out that edge and any little scratches from being moved around. And then I cleaned this thoroughly with rubbing alcohol to prep it for finish. I'm going in again with Osmo on the top. I think that this stuff just gives the best look on resin, so I always go back to it thoroughly coat a surface with it using a cloth and then with a bone dry cloth I wipe off every last bit of extra that is one coat so I'm gonna let this dry a little bit then we'll flip it over and we will do the top side this is also always one of the best steps when working with walnut slabs because you never fully know exactly what the grain is going to look like until now This ended up getting about four coats of Osmo so that it would be extra durable since it's going into a baby's room. Brooke handled the drawer faces and gave them the same finish as the rest of the piece. And we don't know what it is about New England wood, but it always has so much character. It makes it especially fun to work with the wood we milled ourselves. At 
this stage, I could measure out the drawer dimensions. I cut these out of half-inch plywood on the table saw. Now that we have our sides cut, we need to be able to put them together like that. And in order to maximize the glue up strength, I'm just going to route a rabbit in one side so that the uh, sides will sit inside of the face. I'm gonna do a test cut on some of the scraps. And once we get those, the uh, router settings honed in, then we'll go through and do the rest of the drawers. That looks great. Let's do the real ones now. I also needed to route out a channel where the bottom of each drawer will rest in. I measured the exact thickness of each drawer and carefully added that along each piece as well. The last thing to cut were those drawer bottoms out of quarter inch plywood. Brooke handled the glue up using band clamps to get nice square edges. Once the glue dried, these got a good sand. Moving furniture stinks, so on a whim I had the idea to add handles to the back of the dresser. I cut out a rectangle on the back of the dresser where I wanted them and then 3D modeled and printed a guard to pop over it later on. Next, it was time to install the drawer slides. This is admittedly rarely a fun part of any furniture build because they need to be pretty precise. But a few months back, Craig gave us drawer slide jigs to give a try. So I figured I would give them a go on this build. And they did make for a really seamless installation process. Can it be done without them? Yes, absolutely. However, they did do their job well, saved us a lot of time and made things a lot easier. After pulling the drawers out for now, I pop my 3D printed handles into place. These are designed to lock into place and came out looking nice and sleek like I had hoped. To get the top secured, I'm going to use corner brackets. I made a little jig to help make it easy to drill a hole in the perfect spot to secure a series of metal braces into place. Alright, so now that we have the braces mounted along the top, we're going to position the top on the piece where we want it, and then we're going to screw from the underside into the top. Installing the top was pretty simple from here. Just a pilot hole and screw into each brace. Installing the drawer faces took a bit more finesse. I positioned them and then used a brad nailer to go through the face to lightly tack it onto the drawer itself. This leaves a barely noticeable hole. To keep each drawer face evenly spaced and parallel, I used scraps of quarter inch plywood between pieces and along the edges. I slowly worked my way up the dresser this way. Also of note is that I went into the drawer with the nail gun at an angle because I didn't want to shoot through the inside of the drawer. This was a pretty exciting part of the build because I could really see the final piece coming together. Very gently, I pulled out each drawer and added pilot holes from behind. I then screwed the faces much more securely into place. The last touch is the drawer pulls. 
My sister wanted the same ones we used on the nightstands a month or two back, so I grabbed some more of them and installed them using the Craig drawer pull jig. And then it was done. The dresser came out fantastic. I kind of wish it was for my house, but it's for my nephew, so we'll let it slide. Until next time, I'm Michael, and this is Maker's Workshop. Don't forget to click subscribe.